Building airplanes is hard. Making large airplanes is even harder. Building large planes that can compete globally is the most difficult task of all. Right now, only two companies dominate this industry, Boeing from the United States and Airbus from Europe. Together, they control almost the entire market for commercial passenger aircraft. Out of about 25,000 commercial planes in service around the world, 11,600 are made by Boeing and 11,000 by Airbus. Embraer, a Brazilian company, has produced around 2,000. Chinese and Russian companies have made very few, and Bombardier from Canada stopped making commercial jets in 2020. They now only produce private and business jets. This shows just how hard it is to profit from building commercial airplanes. Even this data underplays the true dominance of Boeing and Airbus. The largest plane made by Embraer can only carry 120 passengers and fly 4,800 kilometers. That's fine for short flights, but can't go from New York to London. Only Boeing and Airbus make long-haul planes that are efficient and economically viable. China has the largest aviation market with around 4,000 commercial aircraft in service. Most of them are bought from the U.S. and Europe. This isn't because China hasn't tried. The Chinese government has invested tens of billions into its domestic aircraft company, Comac. So far, results have been disappointing. Only 161 Comac planes are flying today. In May 2023, Comac's new jet, the C919, made its first commercial flight. It's designed to compete with Boeing's 737 and Airbus's A320. Comac claims to have 1,000 orders, but delivering them is another story. In this video, we'll look at why building commercial jets is so difficult, what Comac is doing, and whether it has any chance to break the Boeing Airbus duopoly. China has been building civilian planes for a long time, but with little success. Their first modern passenger plane was the Xian Y7, a 52-seat turboprop that entered service in 1984. However, it wasn't a Chinese design. It was based on a Ukrainian model from the 1960s. By the time China built it, it was already outdated. Only about 100 were made, mostly for the Chinese Air Force. This showed China wasn't yet ready to build a competitive commercial aircraft. In the 1970s, China restored diplomatic ties with the U.S., which allowed Chinese airlines to start importing Boeing jets like the 707. In the 1980s, they began buying Airbus planes too. Today, not much has changed. Chinese airlines still rely on imports, but technically, China can build planes. Their military has over 3,000 domestically made aircraft. The problem is, military and civilian planes are very different. Military jets don't prioritize cost or fuel efficiency. They often require more maintenance and burn more fuel. For example, the U.S. military's C-17 costs $19,000 an hour to fly, while a Boeing 737 costs around $8,500 per hour. Civilian planes must be fuel-efficient, safe, and easy to maintain. Boeing and Airbus have decades of experience making this work. A new company would need years of research just to match today's standards. And by then, Boeing and Airbus will have made even better planes. If your plane is less fuel-efficient, no airline will buy it. That's why government support is critical. In 2008, China created Comac, a state-owned company focused on commercial jets. It was split from a military aerospace company so it could buy parts from Western suppliers without strict export controls. Their first jet, the ARJ-21 or C-909, entered service in 2016. It seats up to 90 people and is suitable for short flights. But most of its parts, like wings, engines, and avionics, are made overseas. China hopes to one day build every part itself, but that's still far away. Comac has delivered 162 ARJ-21 planes, mostly to Chinese airlines. But since those airlines are state-owned, these sales aren't truly market-driven. It's like one government department buying from another. Only two foreign airlines have ordered the ARJ-21, Transnusa from Indonesia and Lao Airlines from Laos. But Transnusa is partly owned by a Chinese government-backed leasing company, so that deal was also influenced. Lao Airlines only ordered two planes, and just one has been delivered. In reality, few independent airlines want the ARJ-21. It's believed to be less fuel-efficient than its competitors, which explains the low sales. Fuel costs matter a lot. Take Frontier Airlines in the U.S. In 2024, they made $3.8 billion in revenue. Their biggest cost was jet fuel at $1 billion. 
Maintenance cost another $200 million. If an airline uses planes that are just 20% less fuel efficient, their cost would rise sharply. They'd have to buy those planes at a much lower price to make it worth it. But COMAX production is small, just 35 planes in 2024. So the cost per unit is likely high. The ARJ-21 may not be a commercial success, but it gave COMAC the experience to build a better plane, the C-919. This larger jet can carry up to 192 passengers. It's meant to compete with the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. It flew commercially for the first time in May 2023. It has a sleek interior and similar design to its competitors, but it still uses many imported parts, including engines made by a U.S.-French partnership. The C-19 is about 6% less fuel efficient than the A320neo and 13% less than the 737 MAX. That small difference matters a lot to airlines. Most of the 1,000 claimed C919 orders come from Chinese government-linked buyers. COMAX progress has been huge, but it's cost China over $49 billion in direct funding. In a free market, these planes would likely fail. But inside China, with state support and the world's largest aviation market, COMAC may still succeed, at least domestically. Thanks for watching Investing Flicks. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and drop a comment below. For more expert insights on personal finance, investing, and wealth building, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out.